All right, guys, I am here at Coos Bay, and I'm with my buddy Colton from Whiskey Throttle. Yep. And uh, he's got kind of a cool car, I've heard. Yeah. I don't know. The pictures look cool. It's unique. Yeah. So we're going to check it out. He's got a pretty badass YXZ that he's built specifically, not for dunin', but for jumping. So this is my jump car. We call it Huckleberry. It's uh, we built it specifically for jumping. We do it a little bit, but it tends to break a lot. So me and my brother fabbed up all the fab work on it. We built custom A arms for the front end. Dropped the shocks down the lower A arm. Right. So those were normally up on top. Yeah, right? they're normally up here, and the shocks are teeny, and they come up through here. And those are not the original shocks. Yeah, those yeah. Are... These are actually shocks off of a Can Am X3, so they're really? a lot longer. Are those the rears? Uh, no, these are the fronts off okay. of a Can Am X3. Gotcha. They're a lot longer than the stock YXZ shocks, though. Uh, we had Desert Speed go through and tune the shocks. We built a custom uh, shock mount for the upper shocks. Um, we were in Oklahoma and actually bent it and had to gusset it there. That was pretty cool. There's some dudes there that let us use their shop. It was awesome. That was open on the top, right? Yeah, it was open. This, this gusset piece right here didn't exist. And we actually folded them up a little bit. On and, that uh, big hit? Yeah. You had one jump, right? Yeah, it was bad. I got one jump in the last two events that I've been in. <laughs> it's uh, been a rough, it was last year was a rough year. Let's see if we can fix that this year. Yeah, yeah. So what have you done on the front end that will so hopefully fix that? We cut everything off the front end. Basically just left this main channel and we redid the bump stops. We gusseted everything. I don't know, underneath the plastics you can kind of see where we've gusseted. These gussets run through the entire front end and it'll help take that load and spread it across to everything. Um, we added more gusset bars to it as well. And there's nothing up front anymore. There's no radiator, there's no No radiator, up there. the radiator's in the back. I've got the diffs that's still four wheel drive capable for now. Do you um, jump four wheel? Uh, no, I jump in two wheel. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind jumping in four wheel on some jumps, but these yeah. ones out here, we just You just haul balls through the back wheels? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got limit straps in there? Limit straps in the front end, yep. It just has too much travel for the axles. It'll get axle bind at full yep. droop, so that's why we put limit straps on it. Um, what size king uh, bump stop are those? These are two inch stroke, but they're two and a half inch uh, diameter. They're they're for a trophy truck. Yeah, I was everything say, that's for built, a much bigger vehicle. Everything we built on the shocks, like the shafts are bigger on the shocks, the end loops are bigger, the cups are bigger. Everything we did was for a trophy truck sized right. stuff, you know? What about the knuckles and all that? Is that The knuckles, stock? yeah. So the knuckles, these are high, three quarter inch heim joints on the upper A arms, and then they're uh, three quarter inch, uh, they call them end, end joint. Yeah. We bought those from, I think it was Barnes. It's for rock bouncing stuff, so. We tried to build it so it won't come apart. And your hubs? The hubs are actually stock YXZ hubs. So. And they seem to last? They seem to last. We haven't broke them yet. Yeah, so. you're jumping sand, not dirt, right? Yeah. So. We'll see, maybe in uh, Oklahoma this year when we go to the dirt track, <laughs> it might change, but uh, right. they've held up so far. We've mainly had frame damage, like frames giving, or gusset pieces giving right. away. And it's mostly in the front end. Like the, yeah, the, we haven't had a single problem the tub with the and rear all that. It's yep. all, yeah. The rear has been great, but we cannot get the front to hold up. But, I mean, there's not much to work with. We're not, right. it's not a razor, you know, I don't have bars and you, running clear on the those outside. Those cross pieces are, are all you, right? Yeah, so everything, this all is us. On a YXZ, you've got this bar that runs up and across, and that is it. Yeah, so all that extra Yeah, everything tube in from there this is main you. channel yeah. out is us. Um, we've gusseted down the frame, gussets down here just to keep me safe. Yeah. Um, you got bars going through the doors? Because those are solid doors, These right? are solid doors, yeah. So there's a bar coming across the top here, and then there's uh, two bars. Two bars, one coming down here and one coming down here. And then I think we put another bar in the back too. Yeah, there's a bar coming this way as well. So you've solidified the tub. Yeah, the tub, yeah. the tub is not moving. We did that specifically because we wanted to jump far and I don't want doors coming open. I don't want the right. cab crashing in on me. It when is, there's a high likelihood of rolling, you yes. don't want anything coming out. Yep, we've welded the cage on. So the cage is part of the frame now. So the cage on top is, is all you? Um, the cage was an LSR cage but we've cut, since cut, and 
Right. Because I mean, you can see that there's bolts. Lot. Yeah, there's still where bolts. you would normally have the bungs going, but you welded through them. Yeah, we welded all around them. It was just a an easier way. It was something that we did after we built the car. We wanted to weld on, weld everything together. So is we, that all like 120? Yeah, yeah, 120 wall. Um, I can't remember the diameter, but it's 120 wall. It's chrome ollie too, so. And that it's that a looks stack. like a fairly thick aluminum roof too, right? Yeah, the the roof. Um, I can't remember the thickness, but it was stuff that trophy truck dudes ran. We're putting on the panels. Yeah, that, and uh, guys that were running desert races and trucks. Just, I didn't want anything to come down on me. What about these wheels and these tires? These are pretty This is legit. new this year. Uh, Packard hooked me up with these. These are Packard uh, beadlock wheels, 15 inch wheel. Um, Packard's new sand setup. It seems to be doing real well so far. Yeah, they're, they're pretty blinging. Do yeah. those, those tires don't come blue, do they? Yeah, no, I uh, I went to my local hobby store. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, <laughs> that's exactly where it was. Found some paint pens and uh, and painted the tires on my brother's deck while we drank coffee. <laughs> so are those wheels a, a two-piece? They're, yeah, they're a two-piece or a three, depending if you want to count, count the, the walk, you know, yeah. the, the bead lock. But it's a two-piece. You got an aluminum center and then you've got the bucket. Yeah, um, and that's a composite or is that a, a carbon? Um, this is, I think it's a composite, it's not a carbon. It's okay. all aluminum, I believe. Okay. I'd have to. Cause they got some new carbon yeah, wheels out that are pretty hot. series are yeah. sick, but I yeah. need a bead lock. Yeah. So they, they were yeah, talking about. You're not gonna 50 bolt a freaking carbon. Tub, no. So. so one of the things that set this car off is the wing and the kind of just the look and feel of it. That thing, that thing's pretty legit. <laughs> yeah, we grew up in the uh, old, you know, Fast and Furious days, man, and that's when I was a kid, so I had to keep that, that yeah. vibe alive. No, I love it. The colors, we grew up riding jet skis like in the early 90s. I still have a 93 stand-up jet ski that is basically, basically the same the color, same color. Set, set up. Does it have the Dixie Cup theme to it? Yeah, <laughs> yep. And so that's kind of where our, the color scheme came from, is we loved that old retro crazy style of colors. So what do you got going on on the, on the arms back here? Cause... The arms, we custom built these arms. Um, it's a trailing arm setup, whereas the YZ is not a trailing. It's a got like some weird box upper A arm, right. and then the then the lower is like this triangle A arm. Um, I didn't love it, so I wanted to do this. Not very many. Yeah. Not very many people have done it since. Or well, and the guys that do it. are normally long. Long armed yeah. for desert. Yeah. And yeah. so these are still pretty close to stock length, right? Yeah, they're pretty close. Like wheel position. Um, it's wide. It's long traveled. Like it, we run the plus four HCR axles. Okay. So it's so you're wider. wider, but you're not longer like it's, wheelbase. Yeah, the wheelbase I put it at 90, 90 90.5 inches. I think is what the Pro XP the Pro XP is. Yeah. And I matched that wheelbase, but that's some of the front too. We lengthened out. Yeah. So with those arms, your forward set. Yeah. So there, these come back a little bit. Um, I basically put directly in line with the axle as much as I could. Right. So, I, you know. Yeah, you're pretty straight on. Yeah. And that's how we set the back. What axles are you running then? HCR. HCR. HCR plus four or plus four and a half, whatever their right. long travel kit is. Gotcha. Um, you got some ZRP arms. ZRP ar ZRP radius rods. Um, the Fox shocks from. From an X3, again they're tuned. You know, um, the bump stops. So these shocks are, are tuned to hit for high velocity hit. Yes. So they, it, this is not a plush Cadillac. No, this thing does not do well through the whoops. I get a lot of people like, "Oh, that thing must rip through the whoops." It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it's pretty violent. <laughs> it's pretty violent. It it is made to take a huge hit and keep yeah. going. And so you're not you're not five stages of of Kush here. This is no. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's not crazy hard but it is not built for for running whoops so again you're using the stock hubs in the back stock hubs in the back yep and, and what's that radius rod plate this is we custom built this radius rod too at my brother's shop um it's pretty stout or the radius rod plate yeah it's pretty stout giving you um, that double shear strength yep yeah double sheared everything in the rear that was one thing that we learned was a must the first time we built it I don't know, two years ago, we didn't have it double sheared in the rear, at least right here, and so we had to rework that. So that the trailing arms are all boxed, double end, yep. everything? Yep, everything double sheared back there. Because it even has like the tube going through. Yeah, yep, so you've yep. got a bolt that goes through a tube, you've got the radius rod in there, and then it bolts on the outside. Um, 
And then those bump stops in the back are bigger, right? Yeah, they're the same diameter, two and a half inch uh, diameter, but they're a four, four inch stroke on them. So that's, uh, we were able to put that in the rear. You can't have that much bump stop in the front or they're always hitting no matter how much, right. you know, you get this much, you get an inch of travel out of it versus, you know, four inches before they touch. Then you got the radiator in the back. Is that a CBR? Uh, it's actually an aluminum radiator. I have a Jeep Cherokee, I think. <laughs> they were, I did that before I ever built the machine and looked online and people were doing it. So I was like, and Then yeah. you have the intercooler in the front? Yeah, the pack, uh, we just went to a Packard intercooler set up in the front. Um, Packard uh, intake manifold is new this year too. They've got this car dialed. Last year I had massive problems out here. Couldn't get it to run right. Yeah, you were sputtering all over the place. Yeah, even in Oklahoma it was running like crap. Um, and then Utah, it pulled together enough to do the event. And then now this year it is, it is running top notch. And that so have is, you done the, the transmission swap, like all the gearing and all that? Nope, it's on stock gearing. I was going to do the, a lower gearing and then uh, started talking to the guys over at Packard and they were like, you know, if you run a little bit more power, you don't need to worry about that gearing. So you got a custom exhaust there? Custom exhaust, um, just kind of threw it together. I think- So you welded the, the header and everything? Or? Uh, no, the header is actually, it's a stock header and the old MPI turbo kits just bolted up to the stock header. Yeah. And then the exhaust after that is what we built. Um, that'll probably be switched out for some Packard stuff here shortly. They got some new exhaust stuff coming yeah, out, it's pretty they, hot. They've got a better header, turbo, so it'll spool faster, and right. we're, we'll probably end up doing some Willy Fest in, in uh, Sand Hollow, so. Then you got a catch can. Yeah, got... we painted the catch can to match. Same thing on this side. Gusset plates and stuff are just painted as far as to, to make it look good, you know? Right. Um, the gusset plate for the motor. Did you do anything on the motor mounts, like to solidify that a little more, or? Uh, you know, or Yamaha did a pretty good job on that. They, the motor don't move. We've never had any issues. The, people have had issues blowing diffs out. I luckily haven't had that happen yet. So we'll leave it until until that happens. And then I'm sure a bigger diff will come. So have you had this dynoed at all? Like, do you know how much power you're putting out? Um, we had it dynoed at eight pounds when we were doing eight, running eight pounds, and it dynoed at like two or 180. Five-ish to the wheels, but it's bumped up to 10 pounds now. It's really, we don't need to run a ton of power when we're jumping. Right. It, you it's know, more two, about getting there quickly, and then yes. once you transition, then keep getting the, the power suspension bed. extended yep. and getting out of it. Yeah. So I mean, 250 max is about as max power-wise as I'd ever run jumping. So when you're when you're flying, do you do you have to manage the throttle control on this, or does it fly pretty uh, pretty flat? You know, this thing flies pretty flat. I'm pretty surprised it, it tracks real well through the air. Um, I just stay in the gas until I'm up in the air, and then we'll, from there it's either keeping in the gas or maybe touching the brake a little bit. But touching the brake can get sketchy. Yeah, it gets sketchy real yeah. fast. That's what screwed me in Oklahoma. <laughs> I just, I'll drive my front end in the dirt. Well, that in the, the 35 mile an hour. Yeah, yeah that, that didn't help either. A Kirky seat's in here. We were running a Sparco seat last year, but I switched it out for a full containment seat. It's just a little nicer. It fits my body a little better. It's got shoulder pads right here, pad for my head. And then the thing that really sets this seat apart from my uh, Sparco seat is these pads come in and they hug my ribs super tight. So I do not move in this when I'm bolted in, when I'm when my harnesses are on, and my Hans device, I literally cannot move at all. I can move enough to shift and to drive, but that is it. And that is such an important part. Like, you got a lot of guys out here jumping now with these suspension seats and and no Hans devices, and it is very sketchy. Like, you can break your back super easy, as we saw in Sand Hollow. Yeah. That, that guy didn't. He he probably only went a hundred feet and broke his back, that's yeah. not good. And it's a suspension seat, it's about comfort for, for cruising, it's yes. not for jumping. Uh, you look at all the stunt guys, monster truck guys, all those guys were on a, a rigid seat with bolstering, you know, foam filled body contours, yep. all that stuff. Yeah, it's very important and, and it seems counterintuitive for a lot of people to have a hard seat, but once you take a hard hit in a hard seat, you'll completely understand why everyone runs one. 
Yeah, it's not sitting on a bench and falling. It's yeah. you're strapped into it. It's body contoured. It's hugging. It's all of it. Yeah, but I took some hard hits in the Sparco seat last year, and it I did not have any back pain, no neck pain, like nothing. So it to me, this is the most important part. Like a good seat, Hans device with a nice five point. I mean, other than a cage, that is the biggest thing that, in my opinion, that you could do right. to keep yourself safe if, if you're going to be jumping far. You got to keep your head not moving. You got to yes. keep your back straight. You got to keep your, your body not shifting because that's the biggest problem. These guys go jump on stock seats. And what ends up happening is they slip around, their body rolls, their mm -hmm. back twists, whatever. Yeah, and in a suspension seat, you'll have your, your five points hooked up and then you'll compress. And it loosens. And, and then you have all this gap in here and then you come back up and it grabs your shoulders and just compresses you over and over. That's why all those guys have broken collarbones yep. and stuff. Yep. Yeah, and that's hard on your back, hard on your discs. I, it is, I couldn't stress that enough, having a proper seat set up. And it's important to understand that you're out to have fun, you're not out to prove something, right? Yep. And so we got to know our limits and we, we all as a community need to let each other know, hey, you're pushing it a little too hard. Yeah. Tone it down a little bit. Yep. Yeah, and we've had talks with, with guys out here that are sending it big and trying just to, to make it known that it is a very important thing to me. I, I don't want to see anyone get hurt. Well, I want competition, but I want it the right way. Well, and then you got some whips up here. Yeah, we got Rocket Whips. They're a local Utah company. They seem to be doing real well for me. And uh, of course, the American flag. We always run the American flag. And it's been windy out here this week, so they've uh, had no breaks. They've been up at full stance the whole time. Yep. So what do you think? Like last year, you you jumped. What was your what was your jump last year? In Utah, it was 154. Yeah. 154 feet. So, permit jump permitting, I would love to go 180. Yeah. You know, we'll see. I mean, really, I'd love to try and beat Al McBeth's jump, but, <laughs> but that's a. That's a feat in itself. You have to have a perfect jump, a perfect landing. like. And with all the headwind today, this week, yeah. it's going to be a tough. Yeah, we'll see. That's another thing. It's supposed to die down, what's today, Thursday? Today's Thursday, yeah. It's supposed to die down tomorrow. So. And so we have Huck Hit Fest happening over that direction this year. It used to be over on the other side of the racetrack down that way. But that jump kind of just killed everybody's speed. So we're going back over to Willie Fest Hill this year. Uh, so that should be fun. Now, you just bought a Pro R4. I just brought a, bought a Pro R4. And that, how's that thing feeling? Uh, I like it. It's heavy. I, yeah. uh, I talk Way heavier to than YXZ. <laughs> yeah, I talk with a shock already. Did you? Um, second, second trip out. We were jumping for, uh, it was my fault. We were jumping for about 45 minutes straight. Yeah. Not big ones, you know, but just. Constant heat, constant Yeah, constant hits. heat. Yep. I like it so far. The one thing I don't love about it is the exhaust runs real close to the shock I tacoed, and it seems to be heating the, the shock up. Yeah. And that's probably my worst complaint so far. There's a couple companies that are building exhaust that kind of tuck it into the frame and give you a lot more room. So well, that thing's pretty much basically stock, right? Yeah, I haven't done much. Just a just a windshield. The, the sport trim doesn't come with a roof, so just stuff to make the family more comfy. Now to the, uh, how does the power delivery feel? Talking about, you know, this souped up Yamaha experience um, versus a stock machine you know, four, with a two cylinder, four cylinder. It's a four cylinder. Two liter, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's different. I'm used to turbos, so I'm always constantly waiting for that turbo to kick in and it doesn't. But the throttle, I love on it. The throttle is so just responsive. You can just whap, 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 whap around corners and right. it just, responds so amazing. Do you think you're going to be turning that into a jumper or do you yeah. think it's going to be a family car? It's too car? heavy. Yeah. Maybe maybe in the future if I could get my hands on a two-seater, but yeah. but that thing is so heavy. It it takes a hit great. But that would do so out in the whoop tire. It does really good. Yeah. I think it needs different tires. The tires suck on them. So those are the the OE tires, yep. the the new Ravagers or whatever yeah, they are. Yeah, they're they're not my favorite. Rampages, yeah. They just chuck sand in the cab whenever you turn. Yeah. Are those yeah. stock wheels? Yeah. How does the family like it? They love it. Yeah, they're probably like going from yeah. bouncy, bouncy castles to yeah. Cadillacs. Yeah, we, we had a Turbo S that I liked a lot, a four-seat Turbo S that we sold a while back. We bought a two-seat Can-Am. It was fun for a little while, but I like Polaris. I just, I Even I the YZ is still a little bit more of an upright experience. Yeah. And the Can-Am's so laid back. Yep. 
Yeah, the, they did, the Pro R is they did sit the seats back a little bit. It's kind of like the, hat, the medium between a Turbo S and the Can-Am, you know? Turbo S was sit, they sat so straight up and down. Yeah. This one leans you back just a skosh, but nowhere near the, the X3. But I, I like it so far. All right, guys, well, that's been cool. Uh, look forward to seeing his car. It's always cool to see it back on its wheels. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, it should be a good time, and uh, good luck this weekend. Thanks, dude. We hope you make us proud. Thanks, Zach. Peace.